Expression Media integrates very well with Adobe Photoshop. The advantage of this is that Expression Media can be used to handle all of your metadata and asset management and file management needs. And Adobe Photoshop can be used to perform your image corrections, compositing, tonal correction, and so forth. There are several ways to interface between the two. And there are three different ways to open files from Expression Media into Photoshop itself. The first is to select an image and come up to the, the gear icon, the Open With, and select Open With Adobe Photoshop CS3. A second way of doing it is to right-click on the file and select Open With here from this menu. The third way is to come up under the Edit menu and select Preferences, and under the General menu, adjust the options for double-click Instead of switching views, which would take you from thumbnail to media and so forth on double-clicking, you can launch the Creator application, which will be Photoshop CS3 in this case. Alternatively, for an editing tip, you can double-click to view in Lighttable, which is what we used for editing and magnifying and comparing images. So for the time being, we'll launch the Creator application, select OK, and double-clicking on this file, we'll open it into Adobe Photoshop. Now, as you go through and you make changes, and certainly making multiple files, Adobe Photoshop will reflect those changes back into Expression Media for the most part. And I say for the most part because there are a couple of workarounds that you need to be aware of if you're working with raw files. So I'll close out of, out of this image without making any changes. Return to my Expression Media catalog, and I'll scroll up to a series of raw files. Now. As I go into my RAW file and double-click to make a change, then you see I've added a grayscale interpretation of this original RAW file. It's in the Olympus RAW format, .orf. And when I select Done, you'll notice that by returning to Expression Media, it doesn't update my preview here. And the reason for this is that the way that Adobe processes the raw files, it does, doesn't ever write any information into the original raw file itself. It only writes the information into what's called a sidecar file, which is an XMP-based text file that controls all of your settings, your changes for temperature and tint and exposure and so forth. If you'd like these changes to be reflected into your Expression Media Catalog, you'll want to open your image into Adobe Camera Raw, then instead of pressing Done to return, you'll want to save your image and save your image as a DNG file. And this is Adobe's digital negative. It's still a raw file, can still be edited, is unprocessed data, but will give you a better preview the first time that you return to Expression Media. So I'll go ahead and save that here. And once that's done saving, I'll return to my image library. Since I have my auto-update turned on, I would expect to see this file down here at the bottom. And there it is. And what I can do is go to the View menu and Sort. Sort based on file name. And scroll back up to my URA photographs. And there's the DNG. Now, I won't always update for successive changes, but this is one way, particularly if you are converting to DNG initially, that you can get a more accurate preview right out of the gate. Now another thing that you may want to do if you are doing a lot of image processing is to begin incorporating Photoshop Actions into your Expression Media and your image processing workflow. Now Photoshop Actions are a series of scripts that are produced within Photoshop and allow you to batch process repetitive actions, much like you would use macros in any of the Office products. Open this image into Photoshop, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert it to Adobe 1998, which it is already good. And what I'm going to do now is show you how I can use an action within Photoshop um, to interface between Expression Media and Photoshop. So what I've done here is I've created an action, which is a series of steps. And what this will do is it will resize the image, convert it to black and white if it hasn't been done already, add a watermark and convert it to the color profile of sRGB, which is best suited for the web. 
So as I run this droplet here, you can see that it automatically resizes it and adds a copyright symbol here. Now, this particular action can be saved as a droplet. And the droplet will live outside of Photoshop. I've put it here on my desktop and can be run on its own. In essence, it's a mini application. Since it's a mini application, I can also run it from within Expression Media using the helper applications. So, once I click on an image here, if I come to Open With, I'll choose this image instead so you can see it doesn't go off the screen. I'll choose Open With, and I have a series of applications here. Now, I want to add my droplet to this list, and I'll click on Helper Applications. Select Add, and navigate to my desktop, and scroll down to the watermark droplet. Select Open, and choose OK. Now, when I right-click on an image and select Open With, I can navigate to my Photoshop droplet, which is a watermark droplet, and press OK. This will open in Photoshop. It's processed it, and it saved it into a folder on my desktop that are files for the website. And you can see that file has been added here, along with a couple of others that I've already processed. So this is just one way that you can interface between Photoshop and Expression Media very quickly and very easily to jumpstart your workflow.